So we read every day, whether that is on our phones, the menu at the CAF, if you're on the campus at um, Northwestern Kirkland. Um, sometimes videos contain writing, etc. So what is close reading? You can base your answers um, based on what you might think it is. Um, but why is close reading so important? Do you think close reading applies to all aspects of your life or just the academic world? So these are big questions you want to think about. Um, so there is quite a difference between reading and close reading. We are not just reading for pleasure in, in this class. Uh, we are to observe, to take the meanings the author has provided for us, and to create new ideas of our own or to further build upon the ideas that we have been given. Um, so when it comes to close reading, what I want you all to realize is that there's nothing mystical about analyzing literary text. There are no magical goggles, though that would be awesome if there were, to help us see hidden answers. It's all about understanding, noticing, and explaining. So going on to understanding, what a lot of students often forget, close reading requires engagement to the text. So noticing what is on the surface is the preliminary step in the process of close reading and you will need to be able to summarize accurately before you can go on. So do not jump right into reading in between the lines. Understand the lines themselves first. Next part is noticing. A common mistake that many students make in this phase is the error of focus. So I encourage you to focus on small scale things like diction and punctuation rather than on large scale things like plot point and character profiles. Um, keep in mind that I'm not saying to ignore the large scale attributes to the text because they are important. What I'm saying is that the primarily focusing on large scale attributes can often lead to summarization. So I can understand that this may sound quite unnerving because students most often will not know what to elaborate on with little, little details. So um, just to kind of throw an idea or like a, an image out there, um, let's think of, I'm not really a Doctor Who fan, but um, maybe some of you, if, even if you don't understand what I'm talking about, have an idea. So if you know what I'm talking about, this is the TARDIS I'm speaking of. If you're not sure, go online, Google TARDIS, it'll um, pop up. Um, but, uh, what I'm trying to get at is that what may seem small on the exterior will be much bigger on the interior. So what can often be opposite for large scale, or this can often be large opposite for the large scale attributes, if you were thinking of it in a different context. So why am I telling you to focus on the small stuff as well as the big stuff is because writers make choices and those choices are worth examining. So what if you don't know where to start with the small scale attributes? Guess what? There are no wrong answers. Um, it could be any feature that is unusual, strange, surprising, or interesting. Whatever the case, it is worth looking into. Focusing in on these areas can often help you understand a confusing area in the text. And so the final step in close reading is explaining. And explaining is about moving beyond what is interesting and onto what is significant. So your goal in this step is to construct an argument about how a particular authorial choices affect the text as a whole. Understand that your goal is not to read the author's mind or know the reasons why they made those particular choices. Instead, the goal is to reveal the objective effects of those choices. So again, these are um, the few steps we take as we are trying to better understand the texts that we are reading through in not just this English class, but in any class from here on. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me.